Howdy, how's it going? My name is Davy Chappie, and it's once again time to talk about a brand flanking new Unearthed Arcana. Rounding up the final archetypes left in Wizards' newest wave of content creation, today's UA brings us the new subclasses for the fighter. Wait, what? What the fuck is this? What? what? J Jeremy? Did you make this? All right. So, putting away the subclasses for one week, Wizards has decided to celebrate their newfound success with the Wildmount book, video on that coming next week, by bringing forth a new concept entirely. Not only do we get about a dozen new spells to play around with, but we also get to have a gander at a new form of magic, the magic tattoos. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, and if you feel like I'll never get a job if I keep this up, feel free to play your games however you want. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So the spells in this UA are a bit of a variety pack. Three of the spells are completely unique, while the other eight spells are all variants on the exact same ability, fittingly named Summon Blank Spirit, with Blank being either Aberrant, Bestial, Celestial, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, Shadow, or Undead. These spells range from 2 to 6 level, with most of them being nestled nicely in 3rd tier, and they all serve the purpose of, and some of you might be ahead of me here, bringing the embodiment of some sort of creature into this world. Each of these summoned creatures has an entire stat block dedicated to it, and it would be nonsense to list each and every one here, but the main gist of it is that when you cast the spell, the spell will give you a small choice, such as whether you want your Celestial to be an attacker or defender type, or if you want your beast to be from the land, air, or water, and that will change the stats of the creature ever so slightly so that it aligns with the type that you chose. You can also kick up the level of the spell slot that you use to create the spirit, and that will raise the creature's AC and health by 1 and 10 respectively. What this all boils down to is that every class gets one or more summons of their own that I suppose are meant to either increase the potential for players who want to have Conjuration be their thing, or influence the players to stop playing D&D and start playing Pokemon. Overall, it's a weird addition that I don't entirely get the point of, since we already have spells that summon things, and I at least personally haven't been craving more summons. And and if these spells went official, I can see a future where every DM bangs their head against the wall in unison because the party doubled their numbers in round one of the fight. Beyond the summon spirit spells, we're also greeted by three completely unique ones that I feel were sort of just thrown in here like a secret piece of legislation on a congress bill to see if they would pass or not. Acid Stream is a first level spell that shoots out a beam of acid in a 30 foot line for 3d4 damage, and it basically lasts forever unless concentration is broken or the recipient of your goo takes an action to wipe it all off. The damage is pretty basic, but the real advantage here is that you're effectively taking an action away from whoever you hit because no one wants goo in their eye, so it's a neat spell that might fall off later, but maybe not. Otherworldly Form is a magical girl spell that transforms you into a being of either the upper or lower planes, and depending on what you choose, you get resistance to either fire and poison or radiant and necrotic, immunity to being poisoned or charmed, spectral wings, a plus two to AC, magical weapon attacks that hit off your spellcasting mod instead of strength or dex, and an extra attack if you don't already have one. As magical girl spells tend to go, I will never agree with the idea of casting a concentration spell that expects you to be in combat, but but otherworldly form doesn't specify that your weapon has to be magical, and plus it gives you a fly speed, so you're good to just fire at people from a distance and keep doing your thing. The only difficulty I actually do have with this spell is that the material component is an object worth 500 gold that is engraved with the symbol of the Outer Planes, which if your character happens to understand the cosmology of the universe, sure, but some DMs aren't so forgiving about what is, to be fair, supposed to be really scarce knowledge. Spirit Shroud surrounds you in a shawl of spirits that spites your enemies by slowing and slapping them when they shanty into your space, your space in this case being a 10 foot radius. If an enemy starts their turn within it, their speed goes down by 10 feet, and if you hit them while they're in it, then they take an extra d8 necrotic or radiant, your choice. The problem with this spell is, as I said before, I just don't like concentration spells that want you punching stuff. And unfortunately, unlike otherworldly form, you can only hit something up to two squares away to get the benefits, ranged or not. Considering this spell can be taken by clerics, paladins, and eldritch knights, it seems obvious that it's meant for characters who don't expect to be hit often, but I just don't trust spells that rely on someone else messing up more than you to work. And finally, we arrive at the coolest part of the article, the magic tattoos, behaving thematically like dragon marks and mechanically like wondrous magical items that require attunement in the form of disappointing your parents, magic tattoos provide magical effects to whoever they're imprinted on, coming in the form of actual tattoos, scars, brands, birthmarks, scales, or whatever permanent symbol you can display on your body. By getting your hands on a magic needle or convincing an alchemical ink master to use your body as a canvas, you can equip yourself with nigh unremovable magic items with the rarity of the tat deciding how much of your body it takes over. It can be a basic tattoo, it can be a sleeve, or it can be the whole shawl. No matter how many tattoos you have on your body, they all all count for one attuned item, and if you ever decide to unattune to them, then they'll just swell back up into the needle that you used to make them in the first place. The tattoos can pretty much do anything, such as resist damage for you, extend into inky tendrils and wrap up your foes, give you a new AC, let you walk through walls, disappear and fly, and be much more unique than the other guys. Again, like the summons, there's just flat out too many tattoos to reasonably shove into one video, but if I can point out the one that I like the most, it would be the Eldritch Claw tattoo, which effectively gives you a reach of 30 feet for one minute, as spooky Hadar tentacles swing out to swipe it, 
whoever you want to hit. It's just such a goofy visual that I really want to try it out in the game. Overall, this UA provides a bit of hope that Wizards is able to make more than just subclasses and races, and while I do think that the needle gimmick is a little bit weird for tattoos, I think they should just be applied like an actual tattoo, I wholly enjoy the idea of charging into battle, ripping off my shirt, and watching my enemies flee before me as dozens of tentacles come out of my chest tattoo of Sonic the Hedgehog. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, check out my social media in the description below, and maybe support me on Patreon, because tattoos are expensive, and I don't know any wizards that do walk-ins. But yeah, Davy out.